In this video, we're going to go over the process of using points of interest actors in Quest Map Pro. Now, a point of interest actor is sort of very similar to a landmark, but rather than it being a full uh, unique area, you'd use it more for something that's going to be more frequent on your map that you may not always want shown. So if we were to assume that we're making something like a survival game and these trees here were harvestable, we might want them to show up on the map but we might not want to treat them as unique trees. So we can use a point of interest actor for that. So to demonstrate this, if we jump into quest map, blueprints, actors, world objects, and we just drag in a point of interest actor, and we put that inside our tree. I think that's about right. And we give this an icon like a tree, set it to a green, and just call it something like three. We can hit play. And if we look, we and just move a little bit closer. Now you can see that we've discovered the house. And if we zoom in, I'm not sure if we're close enough yet. Yep, we are. So at some point in the map, the point of interest actually shows up. It shows up on the compass, it has its own settings, so you can make it smaller or bigger than landmarks and that sort of thing. Similarly, there's no fast travel or anything tied to it, but you can still hover over it and get its name and all that sort of thing. So that's sort of the desire, like the ideal use case for something like a point of interest actor. We can control how it works by going into the controller. And if we hit if we look at our manager. We can scroll down to the markers, POIs. We can use the colors from actor, which is set to true by default. Otherwise, you can set them all to the same color. Other than that, both the map and the compass have their own settings. So in the compass, for instance, we can disable points of interest entirely. And that will make it so that when we get there, the point of interest will still work. It will still show up on the map. But you can see it's not showing up on our compass. So on our mini map, we can zoom in to get a closer look at that. And we can see it on the world map when we zoom in far enough there. But it's not showing up on the compass. Likewise, you can control that on the maps as well. So we set that back to true, go to the maps. We can use, set what shows up on the world map using the visibility flag. So we've got points of interest here. And the same goes for mini maps. We can disable it here. If we scroll down, there are some additional settings for points of interest. So you can set the size um, so that there you can control how big or small the markers are. You can set it to collect them all on startup. I wouldn't recommend doing this under most circumstances unless you want your player to know every single thing about your map straight away. You can disable the hover on. Uh, the point of interest name showing on hover. You can set how long the fade in and out time is. You can set the minimum zoom to show them. And that's sort of everything you've got there. So it's pretty straightforward. The best use case scenario for them is probably not doing this though. It's probably something more like this is actually an actor. So if we edit our tree here, let's jump into the viewport. And instead of placing the point of interest actor every time, we add a child actor. We'll just call this POI, point of interest. And for the child actor, we set the child actor class to point of it, to POI. So BP underscore quest map pro underscore POI. Now you can set the template in here. So we can go into configuration. We can set this to tree. And just to show that we definitely got a different one, let's just make this tree purple. And we'll call it tree. And that's everything we need to do there. So if we close that up, these will all now have their own point of interest. So if we run around in this map, we just go down here. You'll see that we're starting to see the trees pop up. So every single one of these trees now has its own point of interest actor. So you can use these for harvesting nodes. You could use them. So like games like Skyrim that have little procedurally generated bandit camps that aren't actually unique locations, but they're just there for additional things. You might want to use it for something like that. All those sorts of things. It's one of the tools you can use. And so as you zoom in, you'll see them all. And yeah.
So that's point of interest actors. They're very straightforward. Uh, if you have any questions, feedbacks, or suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comments on Discord or via email. Cheers, guys.